Hey there, traders. Question. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, are you the kind of person that mixes your turkey, your gravy, and mashed potatoes and stuffing? Do you make it like squish it all together and create like a soupy mess? Or are you somebody that has to keep your food separate and it can't touch? The reason I ask is because hope you had a nice Thanksgiving, as you said, uh, number one. And number two, the market's trading like... Um, it's all one big soupy mess within this range. I did a video about this last week, I think, um, calling it the Triple Lindy, which is uh, the Roddy Dangerfield correction from the movie uh, Back to School. Um, I have some levels for you that I think would um, define where we could break out of this soupy mess and finally get some direction. So let's jump into the uh, to the wave counts here and uh, I'm tracking two specific scenarios. Uh, the blue count here on my Motive Wave software uh, is the bearish and this is the triple indie, the Rodney Dangerfield of corrections. If you haven't seen Back to School, go watch it. And uh, I have the dreaded triple corrective zigzag. So it's a W, X, Y, X, Z. And overlaid here, I have a, a two standard deviation ATR channel, and it actually is superimposed. This is a daily chart, but I have it from the weekly. So this is a weekly two standard deviation channel. And what you're gonna see as I scroll out is, um, <clears throat> it, it got pretty tight up here uh, as we're heading into the highs, but then as the market has moved lower, we've had um, obviously an increase in volatility, uh, realized vol, and you know, you've seen a much larger expansion in volatility um, that goes along with with this triple correction. So coming off of um, the daily, getting a little bit more detail here. Um, those of you who have studied Elliott Wave uh, and tortured yourself, no, just kidding, I, I love it, um, would know that this is going to be a five wave move down, which is indicative of a downtrend. And then we went into another uh, triple. So this is ABC labeled as W. There's your X wave connector, another ABC. The key breakout level um, would be right here. And what you're gonna find is the two key price levels I'm gonna show you are the same on both the, this blue count, which is the bearish count, and the next one I'm gonna show you, which is the, the bullish count. They're both the same decision levels. So what I'm gonna show you here is we won't know what the proper wave count is until after the fact, but the Fibonacci studies of these different labels um, will point out the exact uh, same two zones. So what's gonna happen here is on the daily of the blue, which is the bearish, if we fail right here, this is downtrend resistance from the 2022 high from January. This is a 100% price relationship of W compared to Y. It's a 786 retracement of the August to October move down. And plus, not shown just for clarity, but it's also a 50% price retracement coming from the 2022 high right there at about 4,100. So guys, all together, it's 4,100 to 4,132 is the major zone. If you fail anywhere below there, we really could be headed for this new lows. Now, here is my alternate. This is the bullish situation. Okay, rather than the triple Lindy, it's just a simple A, B, C correction. And we are now in a new upward motive impulsive wave. And what's interesting is the only way to label it from where I sit is going to be orange one, two, and then a small degree one, two, which means we have a third of a third move up, which is usually where the most ferocious price gains uh, occur and that's going to be right at the same level at about 41.30. All these different uh, Fibonacci levels plus we have this old high here from September. This 41.01 to 41.33 is going to be key and if we do break resistance you need to have your longs ready. You got to have your shopping list ready. You got to know what stocks you want to be involved in and I'll take a look at some s sectors and I'll show you some some further stuff as we're dive down into the to the markets we're going to trade but you better have this ready because if this thing goes it's gonna be, it's gonna go fast, okay? So I'll go down one level and I'm gonna save the details, the gory details for the members. Um, so getting down to the half day chart, this is a 195 chart, the bullish count. Again, this bullish count would say, we have support in this zone. Today sold off, a lot of 
bad news out of China, protests with forced COVID lockdowns, a little bit of a uh, little bit of unrest out of China, which is interesting. Um, so a little bit of sell off would be fine as long as we hold this support zone. And then what happens at that 41? 100 to 4130 is going to be key. This is the bullish intraday. Here is the bearish intraday. Same price support zones, right? If we break through this lower channel support, if we get through 3900, 3850, it's probably going to cement this B wave move and that we are heading lower. I don't know which way we're going to go. You can't know. But what you can have is significant areas of interest right around 3900 to 3865 key support. If that doesn't hold right here uptrend channel on the on the bearish, that was support on the bullish. If that doesn't hold, you're probably heading lower and you better know what you're going to do on the downside in terms of stocks you're going to short or ways you're going to protect your portfolio. So this kind of stuff you say, I don't know, it could go higher or lower from here. Geez, thanks, thanks a ton, Todd. That that's really good. Uh, but I know what these key pockets, these key decision points, where you know the uh, proverbial Thanksgiving turkey is going to break out of the big old soupy mess and it either run higher or lower. You better be prepared. Okay, here's a key uh, intermarket relationship we want to want to watch out for. So we have the ten-year yield in white. And we have the crude oil market in green. Now you can see that there's a pretty good correlation here uh, going back quite some time here. Let's go to the daily. Uh, you can see all the way 13, all the way down to 20. COVID lows rallied back. And what's interesting here is crude oil uh, kind of double topped up here using the left scale at about 124. Crude sold off. Uh, bond yields, the 10 year note yield did sell off, but then all of a sudden made another move up. Remember, long-term inflation expectations were high, selling long bonds, bonds down, yields up. But what happened is the yield, uh, the bond market wasn't getting the memo that crude oil had already topped up around 120 and had been moving lower. Now, why was it moving lower? Uh, you know, could it have been sort of a reduced demand side? You know, this Chinese news uh, with forced lockdowns is certainly having an impact on what's going on there. It could have been, you know, perhaps uh, anchored long-term inflation expectations. Uh, because if you look at the five and 10 year break even um, on the tips market, they're down around two and a half, three percent, certainly within the Fed's target. So you, know, you have yields that pushed up and now they're starting to roll over perhaps getting the memo that crude is already significantly off the high. And if you can uh, trace out, you know, a five wave move, three, four, five, that is how trends reverse. You know, that is how trends reverse is a five wave move because uh, markets don't correct in waves of five, they're correct in waves of three. So if you do get a push down around the three and a half level in the 10 year, that's a five wave move. And that starts to suggest that this is one wave of perhaps a larger correction lower or the start of an outright reversal catching down to crude. I think that's a good thing. I think higher long term bonds is buying of a high yielding bond with anchored long term inflation uh, levels, which so I think stocks and bonds right now are trading together on the long end of the curve. And I think that'd be a good thing. That's going to help us kind of filter through what what wave count is is going to be ultimately the right path forward. Uh, OK, so on the rotation side, this is interesting. Um, let's start with this. So growth to value. Um, this is growth to value. And I've talked about this in the last YouTube video. And this goes back to 2007. We're pretty well off the uptrend support here. This is a, a not a, this is actually on log uh, log right here. So growth to value supports about 0.38. The iShares growth to value ETF. These are the symbols right here. IBW, IVE. So value has Picked up quite a bit of ground on growth, but not until it breaks through the 0.38 is the uptrend of growth to value broken. And again, I don't see a significant top in the stock market without that uptrend being broken. Uh, here's consumer discretionary, consumer staples, exact same deal. Uptrend support, we're right at it on discretionary to staples. This uptrend from 2008 is currently being tested. So you have what 10 14 year uptrend line being tested this second and then if you look at the weekly rrg what's happening large cap 
Um, let's actually go here first. Let's not talk about growth versus value. Let's talk about market capitalizations. What market capitalization uh, kind of stocks are being favored in here? Uh, right now, it is more so large cap. So this is a daily RRG going back a couple weeks. Uh, we're seeing top 200 iShare stocks, doesn't matter if it's growth or value, rotating into favor. It's not a very strong move here, but it's rotating in. And what's rotating out are mid cap, small cap, and micro caps. In fact, micro and small caps are really seeing rotation out right now in favor of, of large cap, uh, top 200. And specifically, as you get into and break down growth first value on the weekly, what you see here is the iShares top 200 value has been rotating in sharply since October, November, where the uh, top 200 growth have been rotating out of favor down to the lagging quadrant. So you're seeing large cap value starting to play in, uh, and then you can see mid cap value, not quite, not as strong as top 200 value, but they're, it's certainly going in the right direction where mid cap value also um, not rotating out, but is starting to head down into this weakening quadrant. So takeaway there is we have two wave counts with two clear price decision zones. We know where to act on the upside. We know where to act on the downside. We know there's a macro relationship going on here with lower crude, uh, which by the way, I didn't mention it, but 66 is, is my target. There's a massive downside pivot um, in the chart in crude oil. Um, and we have bond yields starting to catch lower, which you know, lower yields, is that risk aversion or is that, you know, uh, long-term inflation expectations are coming in and people are buying some some duration. And then we have value rotating in. We have consumer discretionary, consumer staples on a, a long-term 14-year uptrend. So, like, I don't know. I mean, we've been in Florida for a week. Uh, a lot of my mind, I got to filter it all out. But uh, there's a lot of decisions being made. And as I said, market's trading like it's in a big Thanksgiving soup. Uh, it will it will break loose, but you have to be ready for either scenario and have your game plan laid out because what happens is going to happen quick, all right? Best of luck. Talk to you guys soon.